Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking my two spiral bound planners and uncoiling them to use in an A5 Carpe Diem binder, which is right here. I got a little bit excited and I already set up some of the inside with my planner clips and some magnetic ones, but I'm going to try and decrease some of this bulk by using just a couple months worth of each planner in the binder. So let's get started and uncoil. For this, you're obviously gonna need some pliers and I'm using some planner, bla planner bands to hold everything tight together so that it's not moving around while I'm uncoiling. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those covers since obviously they are removable and interchangeable just because it's one less thing to try and hold on to. These planner bands keep the pages really nice and secure. So as you can see, the spiral kind of comes in a little bit on each side. What you're going to do is use your pliers to bend that wire so that it is as round as possible. You're aiming for it to look like just a continuation of that spiral coil as though it had not been bent inward. The rounder you get that, the easier it will be to uncoil without damaging your pages. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna need to do it on the other side as well. Technically only one side needs to be nice and round, but since that was my first attempt at ever working with the coil, I went ahead and did both sides and I was gonna use whichever side looks nicer. That one's not fantastic. So I'm just gonna twist it around. And as you see, it's coming through really quickly. Obviously this footage is sped up a little bit, but in real time, uncoiling just this part, taking the coil off of the planner, took a solid minute. It actually went much faster than I thought it would. coil easily slips through all of those holes and none of those holes are being ripped. Obviously you want to keep those planner bands on if you are planning to recoil, but I am not going to be recoiling. I am going to be covering those holes and punching it for a binder. So I'm going to go ahead and take those bands off and separate my planner into piles and I'm going to be storing some of the excess in that expandable file that I bought at Target. I'm splitting it up right now into things that I want to go ahead and punch and use immediately, which for me is going to be March through oh, about the end of summer, as well as some of the year at a glance pages that come at the front. I'm also going to be taking some of the excess that I never use, like the vellum and that folder and those random stickers that come with it. I never use those. I'm gonna put that in a pile of stuff that I don't need to worry about ever really punching. And then I've also got a pile of things that I am going to cover and punch later on. So that's the pile of stuff I wanna do right away. Next up, I'm doing the exact same thing to my Recollections Spiral Bound Planner removing those covers, putting the planner bands on. This one's a little bit more difficult because it isn't as bulky as my 18 month Erin Condren since I already had several months that were basically no white space stickers in spreads. It was a lot more bulky, so it was easier to keep together with those bands. I also found that because this spiral bound planner from Recollections is a little bit less I don't want to say high quality, but it's clearly a cheaper wire. It's a smaller gauge, and so it didn't have the resistance that the Erin Condren one did. It actually took me a lot longer to get this spiral to be nice and round like I wanted it to be, because as soon as I touched it, the wire would just bend in the opposite direction. There wasn't enough resistance to make it one quick motion. So that is an upside to the Erin Condren. It's more expensive, but 
that coil certainly is much sturdier. Again, just getting one side to look nice and spiraling it away. Now, same as with the Erin Contour, I'm going to split it up into stuff that I want to use immediately, stuff I'll use eventually, stuff that has already been used, and stuff that I'm not going to use at all. I'm going to set those all aside so that I am left with the immediately to be used stuff for my Erin Condren and, and for my Recollections Planner. Going a little bit more minimal with my Recollections one. I'm just doing March, April, and I think May. So this is what's going to be going into my binder right away. As you can see, it's much thinner than before. So I picked up a an A5 planner punch from Michaels. It's the Recollection brand, the teal one. And this packaging had some holes to show what it looks like, but I wanted to test it out for myself. Just like in woodworking, you measure twice and you only cut once. So I wanted to see where the holes are when you actually put it into your punch so that my holes when I punch my planner pages don't end up in the columns or in the boxes. So I punched it and obviously it does not line up with how they made it look. And it looks like the outside is 3 eighths of an inch in from the edge of the page. Now grabbing a sheet from my planner measuring in again it looks like 3 8 in is going to be still pretty far away from the edge of the column so I can put it all the way in and not have to worry about punching into the columns so I'm going to show you two different methods for covering those holes and then punching them the first one and the one that I think is by far better for reasons that you will see soon is using sticker paper this is stuff that I use for my printables and I purchased it on Amazon. I'll go ahead and link it below. I'm starting off by taking my ruler and my craft knife and I'm going to score a line just like I'm kiss cutting printables across the top that's a little bit taller than the page is tall. As you can see it's about, well it's a little bit less than a quarter inch to cover just the holes. I started off eventually with making strips that were half an inch wide and that was just a little bit too small. So some trial and error led me to three quarter inch strips. So what I'm doing is I am marking every three quarters of an inch along that score line. And then I'm gonna use my paper trimmer to cut that into strips. I absolutely hate my paper trimmer though, so in a little bit you'll see a way that I do it without a paper trimmer but here I am cutting strips with my paper trimmer so everything is going to be three quarters of an inch wide All right, that's pretty good, you get the gist. All right, so bringing back some pages, I'm gonna use my March view because you can see that it's not gonna go in. So I bent it right there at that score line that we used our craft knife to make. And I'm putting it roughly between the edge of the holes and the line. And then you just have a little bit of excess on either side trimming it off with some scissors and then punching a hole with my punch. As you can see, it did not go into my boxes. So we're gonna do it again, folding it in half. We purposefully made that score line just a little bit taller than the page, that way you don't have to worry about lining up the side or the top and the bottom. You just have to worry about covering the holes that were where the spiral coil was before. Punching it again didn't go into my monthly ones and it did not go into the column for my weekly. Beautiful. Alright, 
Here's a different way to do it if you don't want to use a paper trimmer. Again, I've scored the top of that page and now I'm going on the bottom since it is a little bit taller and that part is going to be chopped off anyways. I'm marking every three quarters of an inch down here and then I'm also going to mark every three quarters of an inch along the score line. Now I thought that I had filmed this part using the method that I'm about to tell you but apparently I didn't. So after I'm done marking every three quarters of an inch I'm going to use my ruler and connect it connect each dot with the pencil but the method that I found that I like doing the best is instead of using the pencil right here to connect those lines just score it again with the craft knife which creates long strips of sticker and if you do it the way you would a printable the backing stays intact and you just have this beautiful sheet of sticker strips that you can pull off whenever you want to me personally I didn't feel like doing two planners of a year's worth of stickers all at once. So this is a nice way if you only want to do a few months of your planner at a time, you can easily have a sheet prepared. Second method, which I did not particularly enjoy, was using this artist's tape. It is three quarters of an inch, which I figured would be perfect, and it says it's in white. I'm going to take that and this time I'm using my recollections one and I'm going to lay it down about halfway between the edge of the punches and the outside of that line that marks the boxes trim just a little bit I'm gonna have to trim again in just a second fold it over and then cut off that little excess and now I'm going to go ahead and punch it. Some of the downsides, as you can see, it gets stuck in there in a way that the sticker paper did not. And I think it's because there's a little bit of a film. It's kind of like masking tape or painter's tape. It has a little bit of a waxy finish to it, which I think is really gunking up my punch. You can also see that it's a little bit transparent where the sticker paper was not. You can sort of see where those holes were form the coil. So even though it is much faster to put down the tape, the end result is not fantastic. See again it's getting stuck and it does not want to come out. So really the time that you save by not having to cut the strips, you lose trying to get it out of the punch. Comparing in daylight, again, you can also see that the sticker paper is a really bright white and it flows better with the Erin Condren pages, whereas there's a little bit of a yellow tint. It's not a true white on the artist tape. Now that I have them both in there, I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of my setup. As you can see, I've got a whole bunch of clips over here. These Harry Potter ones, as well as this Munchkin and the typewriter, are all by Shepherd Supply Company. This glittery pineapple is by a Crystal Garden. And these ribbon clips are by Happy Planner. I took the coil connector off of my Erin Condren zipper pouch and I tucked it inside that front flap along with my post-it note thingamajigger. Yes, that is a technical term. And inside that pouch, I'm keeping the leftovers that are consolidated from the weekly kit that I'm using, some Bubba Bear quarter boxes, and canceled stickers in the warm and cool tones by Adorably Amy. Those are good things to have with me when I'm on the go. Over here, instead of a standard A5 divider, which is narrower than the standard width of an Erin Condren, I ordered specially this cover, technically, from Stylish Planner on Etsy, and I messaged her asking if it was possible to have it punched to be used as A5 dividers instead of using the punch that would make the coil for the interchangeable covers. It is possible and she easily flipped it 
for the back artwork so that it would look like a regular divider instead but it is a thinner lamination it's a five millimeter versus a ten which is what the standard is for covers I'm using magnetic bookmarks to mark the weeks that I am in and for now I'm keeping them in the back when I'm not using them but this way they don't get knocked out of place when I put my planner in my purse closing it up you can see that it is much thinner there really isn't much of an overhang over there I can easily close that strap without it smashing my dividers and I do have a little pen in there it's a Le Pen because it's the only thing that was thin enough to fit in that elastic band. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about uncoiling, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. And make sure you're following me on Instagram and at Reese Plans. I put some more informational videos here. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.